A very good morning, everyone. Now, if you're looking for the biggest test of electoral opinion since 2019 and the biggest test before the next UK general election, look no further. We have a bumper crop of results coming in over the next 48 hours or so from England, Wales and Scotland. Now, last year's local elections were cancelled because of the pandemic. So this year, we're looking at a record number of results from every part of Britain. This is a key national electoral test here in Scotland and in Wales. Members of the Scottish Parliament and Welsh Senate have been chosen along with thousands of local councillors across England. Now, Keir Starmer was elected Labour leader on the promise of being able to rebuild the Red Wall. But 18 months on from the disastrous general election, the overnight results suggest there is little indication of a fight back. Well, yesterday, the people of Hartlepool in the northeast of England chose a new member of parliament in a by-election. And for the first time since the 1960s, they chose a Conservative. In fact, it was a thumping win for the Conservative Party by nearly 7,000 votes, a 16% swing, and a heavy blow to Labour's hopes of revival in the northeast of England. The Conservative said it was because Boris Johnson had delivered on Brexit while Labour said it underlined the need for the party to change even more to win back its former supporters. But here in Scotland, the very future of the UK is at stake. Will the SNP, either with or without other pro-independence parties, be able to claim a mandate for a second independence referendum, one that Boris Johnson insists he will oppose? Well, from the BBC's headquarters at Pacific Key in Glasgow, David Wallace Lockhart will be analysing the most important Scottish election since devolution. I'll be following the Scottish results as they come in and keeping track of which of these leaders keep smiling as the counting goes on. They'll be glued to this constituency map of Scotland. Now, this was how the results looked after the 2016 election, but that doesn't matter anymore. The 2021 polls are closed, and what's important is how these constituencies and the regional list seats now fill up. And we'll be in Cardiff for the results of the Senate election of the Welsh Parliament to see if Labour in Wales will hold off the challenge of the Conservatives and Plaid Cymru and keep hold on power yet again. And we'll be keeping track of a dozen battles to be mayor of some of England's biggest cities, including London. Laura Kinsberg, our political editor, is here to keep an eye on the political reaction and to give her analysis. And Rita is with me once again in the election studio to bring us the results as they come in. We've already had a swathe of results in from the English Council elections. One of the most eye-catching is this. Harlow in Essex is a Conservative gain from Labour. I'll be using the giant touchscreen to look at the figures behind the results in all seven of the elections taking place across Britain. Our correspondents are in all the places that matter across England, Wales and Scotland. And our night with the numbers, Sir John Curtis, will provide the sharpest analysis of the emerging electoral landscape. And as we've said, a few results already in. They're more than interesting, but there are lots and lots to come. So settle down, uh, join us for all the excitement of this year's election results on the BBC. Yes, welcome everyone. Kirsty and I are your joint hosts today. We're both looking forward to a busy day, to put it mildly, and we're trying to make sense of what's going on. Kirsty, what are you looking for today? 